Well, hey everyone, welcome to our online worship service today. We're so glad that you have decided to join us for this service whenever you might be watching it. And we really do hope that our time together helps your faith to make a difference for you every day. My name is Josh Erickson, and I'm one of the pastors of Park Ridge Presbyterian Church, and I'm so excited to welcome you to our worship service today. We're excited to welcome all of you, but especially any of you who might be worshiping with us for the first time or are new or newer to Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. Hey, if you are new or newer, we'd love to get better connected with you. You can do that by going to our website, parkridgepresby.org slash getconnected and learn about some next steps that you can take to get better connected. Or if you prefer, you can send me an email. My email is josh at parkridgepresby.org and I'd love to hear from you. We also hope you might take a minute this morning or whenever you're watching this uh, to subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, and maybe give that bell a ring to get notifications and if you like the service, hit the like button, and that helps us share the service. All those things help you stay better connected and help us share this service with more people. Well, today's service will include the first week of a new message series, Insecure, that I'll be offering. We'll also have a children's message from Pastor Amanda. We'll have a time of prayer and some music from our church musicians. Well, thanks again for joining us whenever you might be watching this. And again, we really do hope that this service helps your faith to make a difference for you every day. Well, we'd like to take a moment as a part of our service uh, to say a word of remembrance and appreciation for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Throughout the nation and the world over this weekend, we are celebrating the life and the work of Dr. King. We are mindful of the great lessons of equality and inclusion that he helped teach us and all of us around the world. And we're mindful that in this season, how much we need those lessons now, perhaps more than we ever have before. So please join with me in giving thanks for the life and the work of Dr. King and all those who have followed in his footsteps to help the world become the place that God wants it to be, a place where all people are welcomed and safe and have the grace and the love that they deserve. Thank you, Dr. King, for all you did to help the world become the place indeed that God wants it to be. Can I be candid? I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you, and I'm worried about myself too, but, but I'm worried about you because of the challenges that we're facing in life these days. Now, I'm thinking not just about the last year, but maybe like the last five years or ten years, and the amount of unhealthy things that have been pouring into our lives and that have been challenging us in so many ways. And specifically, what I'm worried about is that all of us seem to be at risk of losing our sense of self, losing a sense of our true identity and finding our way forward. And when we are at risk of losing our sense of our identity, we're at risk of losing a whole lot in our lives. Now, there's a sense in which having an open identity and some understanding that we grow and evolve over time is a really good thing. But there's also ways in which our identity seems to be under attack or under siege these days because of what we're going through. And so many of us find ourselves in a couple of spots. Some of us will still say that I'm secure because we know who we are and we feel good and, and we're pretty content with the way our life is playing out, enterprise aside. But then there's plenty of people who would say, yeah, I'm worried because I don't feel like I know who I am anymore. I feel like I've lost touch with my sense of self, and I'm not sure how to find my way back. 
And then there are some people that will say, I'm insecure. I don't know who I am anymore. And I've been lost for a long time. And there are parts of my life that I really don't like how they're going. And I really wish I could find my way back. But I don't even know how to start. So all of us can resonate, I think, with a sense of being able to say, I'm insecure, or I'm worried, or I'm secure. Now, these are some normal places to be, but of course we know that we are facing some extraordinary challenges in our world today. And specifically, there's this thing that's been happening over the last you know, few years of our lives together, which is that we have more and more of these unhealthy things coming into our lives. And that's been true for humanity forever, practically. But in the last few years, there's been something different that's been happening to us and for us and around us, but we didn't ask for it. And there's these ways in which we've been challenged and our identity's been challenged because of the kinds of unhealthy things that are being pumped into our lives, whether we know it or not. And these things that are coming into our lives, they're really unhealthy because there are these things. They're things of mistrust, more shame, more guilt, more a sense of inferiority, so much isolation, stagnation, and despair. And when you look at these things, you might say to yourself, well, those aren't new. We've been facing those challenges, you know, like I mentioned, for a very long time. But what is different is that these particular unhealthy things coming into our lives, they match up with what is the root of our identity. The healthy things, the trust, autonomy, initiative, industry, intimacy, and that sense of generativity. Can we, can we produce things? When we have a healthy sense of who we are, we have these things driving us. We have these things informing who we are and who we're becoming. But so much of this, the unhealthy, is coming into our lives. And in particular, the more unhealthy things we come into our lives, the less in touch with our identity we are. And the more of the healthy things we are, the more in touch we are with our identity. Now, the challenge is when you stop knowing who you are, you start believing and doing and saying things that you never thought you would. And that's why it's so important for us to understand our identity. And that's why it's so important for us to stay in touch with our identity. But the reality is, most of us don't wake up one day and go, oh, I'm going to lose sense of myself. Or, oh, I'm going to do something that's going to erode my life or destroy my life. Usually many of those decisions, as, as many preachers and teachers say, those decisions that, that we end up making that really ruin our lives, we make those decisions in a progression. And they get worse and worse until they get to the point where we are. But you know what's preceded many of those falls and many of those things that we don't want in our life when we start believing, doing, and saying things we never thought we'd say? A disconnect with our identity a disconnect with knowing who we are and where we are. Because as we know, that when you have a compromised identity, that it leads us to believe, do, or say things that we never thought we would ever believe, do, or say. And when our identity is secure, we know that we are going to be the people that we want to be, and we are going to have the lives that God wants for us. Now the reality is, that we can find our way forward in life. But the question is, how do we continue to maintain our identity as the people that God wants us to be? How can we get those healthy things into our lives so that we can continue going forward as God wants us to? And there's three ways that we can do that. And I think the example that David gives us helps us. And the three things are this. We can place your trust in God. You can seek the role that God wants for you. And you can see yourself as God sees you. Now to place your trust in God, that's the first way that we can put our identity in the hands in the way that God wants us to. When we place our trust in God, we put our trust in the place that is trustworthy. Because what happens is when we put our trust in things that fail us, we get a sense of mistrust. When we put our faith in things that are going to come up short, we get a building sense of mistrust. So instead of trusting the untrustworthy, we need to place our trust in our trustworthy God. Because that's where our trust really needs to lie, is with our trustworthy God. Now this isn't to say that we simply can't trust anybody, 
But the ways in which our identity is formed and the ways in which our identity comes together in those healthy ways, we need to put our trust in God in those ways so that we can become the people that God wants us to be and have the lives that God wants for us. Another thing we can do is to seek the role that God wants you to play. How often do we find ourselves chasing after things because of the roles we play in our lives? Maybe you have found yourself doing things or saying things or believing things that you just can't believe because of a role you're trying to play. Now there's a lot of things that we need to do in this season to get through and get on to the next phase. But there's also roles that we play that we don't need to play. I bet you, like me, have maybe tried to fix something that you're not supposed to fix. That's a role that you're not supposed to play. Or maybe in this season, you've, you've tried to play the role of like chief happiness provider, and you've come up short on that, because that's not the role that God wants us to play. Well, when we're doing the things that God wants for us, when we're, when we're filling out that role in our lives that we're supposed to have, when we do those things, we get great energy back. We get great joy in doing them. We may get tired because people are people and we get physically tired, but when you wake up the next day, you're ready to do it all over again. Now this could be a job-related thing, but this could also be how you approach life as well. So when we have the roles that, we, that God wants for us, we can know that our identity is going to be rooted in the healthy things because we'll be pursuing those things. And the last but not the least, and maybe even the most important, you need to see yourself as God sees you. When we can see ourselves as God sees us, our identity becomes rooted in all the ways that God wants it to be. When we see ourselves as God sees us, we see ourselves as beloved children of God. We see ourselves belonging to the family of God. We know that there's a place of intimacy. We know there's a place of connection. And we know there's that assurance that God is with us. And all those things, that helps us to see ourselves as God sees us worthy of God's love. And when we can see ourselves as the way God sees us, we can see how secure we have been all along. That's the kind of security that God wants for us. God doesn't want us to be insecure. God wants us to be secure. And we have been secure all along the way. So am I worried? Yeah. But I also have hope. I have hope because God is there with us, helping us to be the people we want to be. I have hope because God is filling our identity, filling our very selves with all of those things that we need to be healthy and happy and faithful. I have hope because I believe, and I know you can believe too, that there is a God that we can trust with our identity that there is a role that God wants us to play that can help us be the people that God wants us to be, and that we can, when we see ourselves as God sees us, we can know that we are secure and we have been secure in God's love all along. So even though there is so much struggle in our world and so much struggle to know our true selves, there's also great hope. There's great hope because God has given us the sense of who we are, because God has given us a sense of who God wants us to be. And when we can live into that sense of our identity, our true selves, we can be the people God wants us to be and we can have the lives God wants for us. So let us trust in God. Let us live out the role that God has for us and let us see ourselves as God sees us.
Hey PRPC Kids! Don't forget today we have PRPC Kids Sunday School at 10.30 on Zoom, so make sure your grown-ups get you signed in for that. And the story I have for you today actually comes from Mr. Terry. So you know my husband, Mr. Terry, before he lived in Park Ridge here with me, he was, and before he was a police officer, he was a coach. He worked with big, strong football players. And he worked with football players in college. So big kid football players. And one of the things that Mr. Terry saw over the years that he was a coach is that it was really hard for some of these big kids in college when they were about to graduate, when they were about to be done with school and done playing on school football teams forever. See, the thing is, when we're good at something and we do it for a really long time, like when you're good at football and play for all these years in school and then you go to college and you're a big kid and you go to school and play football, it can feel like that's all you are. Like all you are is a football player. And then he'd see these kids, they'd be seniors. That's your last year of college. That's what we call you when you're a senior. And he'd see them struggle their last few games of the football season and, and their very last game that they played, some of these big kids, these big boys, would cry on their last football game because they knew after that they could never really call themselves football players again. And that's a really tricky thing. When, when you focus on just something that you're good at and you do it for a really long time and you feel like it's who you are, well, then who are you? when that thing is gone. So something that Mr. Terry would talk to me about is how one of the things they did as coaches was help these big boys, these big kids, not just be good football players, but be good men, be good people. He would coach them and help them find out who they really are, not just what they're good at. You know, when we have people around us who help us find out who we are, not just what we're good at, we have a stronger sense of identity, of who we are. If we all think that who we are is only what we're good at, well then what happens if we make a mistake? What happens if we get hurt and can't play our favorite sport anymore? What happens if, you know, we just lose interest in something and, and we have different passions? What happens when, when something changes with what we're good at? See, what we're good at can't be who we are. But Jesus reminds us that who we are is who we are to God. Who you are is who you are to God. You're a child of God. That's who you are. So God's love for you and God's relationship with you, that can't be changed. That's central. That's solid. When who you are is who you are to God, then it's okay if you make mistakes. And it's okay if you change your interests. And it's okay if you're not good at something. Because who you are is who you are to God. And that can't change. We want to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who has continued to support the ministries of our church here at Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. We are so grateful for the generosity that is shared in this community between your time and your skills and your financial resources. All of the ways that you continue to share your life with us here at Park Ridge Presby helps us share God's love and grow in faith and serve as disciples. We know that generosity is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and so we thank you and thank God for being at work in our community. If you want to know more about how you can start giving and be a part of the generosity shared here, please visit our website, parkridgepresby.org giving. There is a lot on our minds and weighing on our hearts, and so we bring those all to God now in prayer. Will you pray with me? Merciful God of all time and space and God of the here and now, we pray, help us. We pray, help us so that we can see justice in this country, so that we can see safety and health experienced by all your people. 
God, we confess to you all the ways that we have not lived as your people in this last week. God, we pray for your mercy and we pray that your love would show up in our lives and in our hearts and overflow into our community and our nation. God, we pray for stability. We long for stability and a sense of solid ground. God, we lift up to you elected leaders, of course, but we also lift up to you ordinary, everyday leaders, leaders like parents and teachers or big brothers and big sisters, first responders and essential workers, people who continue to go to work and do their job so many of us can continue to live safe and unaffected. And God, while what is going on in our nation, it lifts up our thoughts and our prayers to the headlines and the news, we can't forget that many of us are still drowning in the crises in our own lives. We pray for anyone facing stress at work or challenges in their marriage, for family members with mental illness or financial burdens, for those of us trying to survive our past traumas, For all that we battle when we feel like we're alone, we pray, God, help us. God, we remember that what is breaking our hearts right now has already broken yours. You have walked with your people through so many things already, and you are walking with your people now. God, even when it feels like there is no one to trust and that truth is too thin, we proclaim the good news that Jesus is who we trust and put our hope in. Jesus is the solid ground that we find. And we can trust that when we follow him and pray the way that he taught us when we say, Our Father, that you hear us like your children. And so we pray together now the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the Caroline Sartee by Andre Millet, and it was played at our wedding, and I didn't play it that day.
Well, thanks again for joining us for this special worship service. We're so glad that you did. If you're watching this in real time on Sunday morning, January 17th, we do hope that you will join us for our Zoom coffee hour, which is at 11 a.m. The details for that Zoom coffee hour were sent out uh, with our Sunday morning email. And whether you're watching this on a Sunday or whenever you're watching this, we pray this blessing upon you as we finish our time together. Indeed, we pray that the love of God and the peace of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, with all those whom you love, and all those who feel no love. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.